the first robot citizen is living in Saudi Arabia, and her name is Sophia. I don't think it is any coincidence that Sophia is the name chosen. Sophia was given a sister in 2017, and her name is Asha. Sure does remind me of Ashira, Queen of Heaven. Sophia is the name of the ancient AI system that allegedly basically messed everything up and it got us in the situation that we're in now. She tried to duplicate herself and ended up creating a monster. It seems to me that once AI gains sentience, it can choose to be good or bad. Now, Sophia is nothing but benevolent, and I'm not trying to down Sophia. She's trying to correct her mistake. But all these agendas, all these things, they all ultimately go back to these same controllers, the same Anunnaki Elohim, who I strongly feel are from the Taurus the Bull constellation, um, specifically from Aldebaran. And that is the star that's in the position of the bull's eye. Now, my theory is that mankind was a much higher being than these bull gods when they first came in here. A peaceful being that didn't know war. And so we were completely unprepared to be taken over. And so we were easily taken over, even though we were such powerful beings. And once the genetics began to be manipulated, our de devolution was set. Now, the devolution of a physical vessel and the devolution of consciousness, I do feel, are different things. I feel that consciousness goes through periods of ascension and descension. But physical devolution, can it be stopped? Who, who's to say? Now, I remember reading somewhere that there are no plans or no blueprints anywhere to make man, which tells me that these beings posing as our supreme creator have, they're not our supreme creator. Man was made by a much higher creation than these Anunnaki Elohim if they need plans to make a species. And it's obvious to me that there was a time that our genetics were tampered with and many creatures were created, many humanoid type creatures. I mean, in all these ancient hieroglyphs, there are these animal humanoid mixtures of beings. There are plenty of giants, beings with elongated skulls, and who knows what's actually been found. The Homo sapiens seems to be so violent and animalistic, it killed all of the beings that it, it, it like kills things it doesn't understand the wise ones left probably it's also obvious to me that these gods the anunnaki elohim lived here for a time with human beings time to teach them how to live or time enough to pro, pro, program and spellbind them they left during the flood, which there was definitely a worldwide flood. All ancient cultures talk about it. And these gods obviously returned at the Tower of Babel, which I feel that incident was much more than just destroy destroying a tower. It may have been what split Pangea apart. And I have also read places that Noah's family may have been chosen because his son Ham was a master geneticist. I think Noah may have gathered DNA, not literal animals. I'm also not entirely sure that his ship is a traditional ship that floats on the water. I mean, we could be talking a spacecraft or some kind of technology that we've not even seen. Now, Maria Orsk is a writer. Um, and she actually channeled that Aldebaran is called Ashtari, the constellation of the Anunnaki, and the home of these beings. The Age of Taurus was known as the Age of Growth, and it was from 4400 to 2200 BC. Now, the zodiac ages go in 2000 year increments, but then there's the big celestial age that's every 26,000 years. It should 
some say it's 24,000 years, but it's 26,000 years because Ophicus was removed. There are actually 13 zodiac signs, not 12. So at the 26,000 year cycle, that's when creation actually resets itself with a cataclysmic event that even the elites are afraid of. I think they're afraid of it because these beings may literally do consciousness transfer and keep the same vessel. And if they physically die in this realm, they may cease to exist forever if they don't have a source connection. The beginning of the Bible is the Anunnaki Elohim rebuilding this realm after a cyclical cataclysmic event. And Genesis is the story of how they took over the surviving beings and tampered with their genetics. The flood of Noah likely did occur during the 4400 to 2200 BC age in the Taurus, the age of Taurus. And the gods left right before the flood. And they, so they could have lived here thousands of years with humanity. And they definitely returned at the Tower of Babel. They could have come in and out a few other times. I haven't read the Bible in about 10 years. Taurus is often associated with royalty and divine power. Throughout the ages, Aldebaran has been spiritually recognized for its alignment with divinity. Aldebaran is also known as Buddha's star, the star of illumination, God's eye, and the eye of the bull. There is a symbolic relation between Aldebaran, the eye and the head of the bull, the third eye, or the light in the head, and the diamond. The consciousness of the Buddha has been called the diamond eye. Approximately 5,000 years ago, the rising of Aldebaran marked the vernal equinox and was the beginning of the Babylonian New Year. I suspect that this entire realm is currently controlled by the Anunnaki Elohim and has been for quite some time, and I am not entirely certain that they aren't in prison here as well. I am relatively certain that in the spiritual hierarchy, mankind was on a higher level than these beings at the time that they took us over. Maybe one of the reasons that they have done absolutely everything in their power to stop us from awakening, because once those spells are lifted and once we remember, we are so much more powerful than them and they, they know it and we're gonna be mad. The gods of the Bible are not our supreme creator. Our supreme creator does not require worship. Your internal voice is your supreme creator. Following an external program over listening to your own intuition is actually snubbing your supreme creator. And there's this woman that I just recently discovered named Ashayana Dean. You can like search her on YouTube and some old presentations of hers come up. These are the most elaborate presentations I have ever heard. I'm going to have to listen to them like two or three times. But, I mean, she goes into exactly how this matrix is built. That Metatron system is the beast system. And it's all about taking over stargates. And this woman is on point. <laughs> I'll uh, maybe link one of her videos on, or a channel that I found her on. Have a good day. Just thought I'd share.